シリーズどうしたのポケモンスタジウムゼロ。ニンテンドー六四専用。の攻略動画を作りたいんだけど。日本語版しかないよね。どうすればいいだろうか。あそっかこんにちは、外人スカム。And welcome to this rental guide for Pokemon Stadium Zero. Now don't look so smug. I know what you're thinking. What the hell is Pokemon Stadium Zero? <laughs> what we in the West call Pokemon Stadium One, well, it's actually Pokemon Stadium Two. And what we call Pokemon Stadium 2, it's actually Pokemon Stadium King Gin, which just means gold and silver. <laughs> the real Pokemon Stadium 1 was only ever released in Japan. I think I can just describe it as a really bad and unfinished version of the true Pokemon Stadium 1. It has far less content. And it doesn't even have all of the Gen 1 Pokemon in it. It only has Final Evos. And it doesn't even have all of those. <laughs> Although Pokemon Stadium Zero is overall far worse than Pokemon Stadium 1, it's not strictly worse. Some aspects of Pokemon Stadium Zero are really funny. <laughs> The camera angles are really dynamic. Some would say too dynamic because often the Pokemon isn't even in the frame. The winning animation is much better. <laughs> It zooms into the teleprompter, the inferno is in the background. Your opponent gets slapped with the word lose, then they explode, and you loot the next badge from their corpse and adorn your cap with it. And by the end, <laughs> Your cap is so blinged out, you're looking like one of those decorated dictators with the million medals. <laughs> That part was way better than the Western release. In terms of balance, we're gonna have to put quotes on that. Balance. <laughs> Stadium Zero actually has cartridge balancing, which is different than Stadium One. Two things to note one is that even though this is in Japanese, it's not. Red and green balancing. So the blizzard freeze chance is not 30%, okay? Listen to me. The blizzard freeze chance is not 30%. It's only 10%. Still 90% accuracy, though. So this is back when Blizzard was good. So back when they made Warcraft 3, but not when they were the best, okay? Not when they made Diablo 2, where Blizzard was 30% freeze. Maybe that was too good. Other big balancing change is related to Hakai Kosen, a hyper beam. On cartridge and in Pokemon Stadium Zero, if you hyper beam and you knock the opponent out, you do not have to recharge. This is important because 70% of the Pokemon in this game have hyper beam. And in Pokemon Stadium 1, they changed it, where hyper beam has to recharge no matter what, assuming you actually hit. Hyper Beam in this game, super, super good, although I don't think you needed me to tell you that. When I say that Stadium Zero has less content, I really mean it. So I'm gonna take you through all of the menus here so that you know how to access the battles if you want to try this yourself. Press A. They start by slapping you in the face with an error message telling you there's no game cart inserted. You can just press A again. The POS loads. <laughs> And look at this. So, most of the options on screen now you just cannot access. <laughs> All the way to the upper left, that says Pokedex. The upper right option says Pokemon Team. So, I'm guessing that's like your active team. The bottom right says Register. So, that would be registering Pokemon from cart. Bottom left, GB would be playing the game on your TV if it was actually inserted. Off actually just means back to the main menu. The giant text box at the top is just really letting you know there's an error, you don't have the game inserted. And the big button in the middle says battle, which is probably what you want to do. You can battle computers or your friends. Just press A again. There's two battle modes here there's free battle on the left, and there's tournament battles on the right. Free battle is 6v6, and it's all mirror matches. Uh, you have to conquer yourself. The opponent will always have the same Pokemon you do. 
You can either choose one of these preset teams. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Or you can build your own team out of the level 30 or level 50 rentals. This video is gonna focus on the tournament mode, but this can be fun to play around with if you happen to access this game on your Nintendo PC. Tournament mode is probably what you think of when you think of Pokemon Stadium. Within tournament mode, you can either do the level 30 version or the level 50 version. The level 30 version is much more similar to what we actually got in Pokemon Stadium 1. You can see there is four ranks here, from Monster Ball all the way up to Master Ball. You build a team of six out of the rentals, and then you face eight trainers sequentially. Level 30 is not that difficult. I trust you can do it yourself. For the rest of this guide, we're gonna focus on the level 50 tournament. Regarding the rentals in this game, I have some good news, and I have some bad news. The good news! These are the best rentals in Pokemon history. Usually when we talk about the rental Pokemon in these battle sim games, we have to huff a ton of tropium <laughs> to try and justify our picks. Usually you'll get good Pokemon with bad moves or bad Pokemon with good moves. But in this game, they straight up give you Alakazam with Psychic. There's no compromises. These rentals are incredible. That's the good news. The bad news is that these rentals are not good enough. These are probably the strongest opponents in Pokemon Battle Sim history. Normally when we say the opponent has competitive moves, we mean that they would be viable in a PvP tournament. In this case, when we say the opponent has competitive moves, we literally mean they're the tournament winners. <laughs> Your opponents in the level 50 circuit are the cyber ghosts of the actual tournament players. You literally fight competitive teams. And this game came out, what, almost 30 years ago? So at this point, some of the competitors might actually be ghosts. Can you defeat the cyber ghosts of the past? Not without some serious strategy. A couple different things make this game extremely difficult. The enemies have very good stats, and they all have Toro. Another factor in the difficulty, you've probably noticed by now, the game is in Japanese. I don't think that was intended to be part of the difficulty, but for you trying this at home, it probably will make things quite a bit more challenging, although I'll do my best to help you mitigate that. This game was criticized for its difficulty by Japanese people, and I don't think they have a problem reading the text. I mentioned earlier that this game doesn't have all of the Pokemon available for rent. So how many does it actually have? It has 40, which is less than a third, but hey, that's still four more than Pokemon Battle Revolution 20 years earlier. God. Pokemon Battle Revolution is so bad! And remember, I described this game as incomplete. So here's how we're gonna do the rankings. I'm going to show you each Pokemon. You can see their moves, I'll describe what they all are. Uh, and I'm always going to go clockwise from the top when describing their moves. Uh, the stats that you see uh, from top to bottom are attack, defense, speed, and special. Remember that special is only one stat, so your special stat is both your special attack and defense. But how do we actually organize 40 different Pokemon? Maybe we could arrange them in some sort of a tiered list. I probably put tier list in the title, right? We're gonna be putting them in a tier list. There's only 40 rentals, so I think we only need four tiers. At the top is literally OU. So these are Pokemon that you should probably bring them to the battle itself. Under that we have Viable. I think you could bring these Pokemon and they could probably do something in most battles. Under that we have Niche no Kuni. This is a Japanese game. These Pokemon I think you could bring, and in some battles, they might do something. Maybe. 
And at the very bottom, we have Meta Mon. Meta Mon is ditto. Ditto's terrible, by the way. <laughs> Uh, these Pokemon are just trash. I don't think you should bring them at all. I think I would actually just describe them as useless. A major factor in evaluating these Pokemon will be how they match up against Tauros. <laughs> Pretty much none of them can actually beat Tauros 1v1, but if they can contribute to being able to gang up on Tauros, then maybe they'll at least make niche. <laughs> I'm also going to use the Japanese names for all of the Pokemon we talk about, so if nothing else, by the end of this tier list, you should learn what all of those are. And the pictures of the Pokemon are going to be on screen, so when I say Fushigibana, I mean Venusaur. I trust that you can match sounds with pictures, right? I know viewers are dumb, but hopefully you're not that dumb. Can you believe that people say I have contempt for my viewers? Where do they get that idea from? First Pokemon, Fushigibana! Its moves are Mega Drain? Toxic, Sleep Powder, and Solar Beam. Somebody already typed it in the chat. Dude, where's my Razor Leaf? If it had Razor Leaf, I might actually put this in Viable because you face a ton of water types, but it doesn't have Razor Leaf. However, it does have Sleep Powder. They did kind of nerf sleep in this game. It lasts zero to three turns, but even if it lasts zero turns and you wake up instantly, uh, you do still lose your turn upon waking up. Just being able to sleep, and being bulky enough to not die in one hit, that's not useless. Congratulations, Fushigibana, I award you. Niche no Kuni. Don't sleep on sleep powder, okay? Toxic also might actually get used. Evasion strategies are banned for being non-competitive, however, all the competitors were Japanese, all of them trained under Koga, all of them know the ninja technique of double team. One of the main strategies, strategies they use is just evasion cheese. It's so miserable. And if you toxic them, they can't evasion cheese you. Unfortunately, after the first double team, they already have a huge chance of dodging your toxic. So I'm not gonna say it's a counter to double team, but if they get toxicked, They'll eventually have to switch. I love competitive evasion strats. It's so fun and skillful. Oh. Don't worry about opponents being immune to toxic, by the way. I know that Gen 1 had, I think, the most poison types of any gen, so you'd think that everything would just soak up toxic, but the opponents actually use good Pokemon, so no poison types. Except Gengar. Hey, it's my favorite Pokemon, Lizardon. He's literally on my hat. Charizard has Fire Blast, which in Gen 1 was super good, right? 85 accuracy, 30% burn chance. It's got Slash, guaranteed crits. It's got Earthquake, really good move. And it has the ninja <laughs> technique of double team. Unfortunately, Charizard in Gen 1 also only had 85 special. Instantly dies to Starmie. Can't status Tauros. But if you're a ninja. <laughs> you might just barely be able to make it to the niche no kuni. Even one double team is fairly powerful. One double team and maybe you can get a 30% burn on Tauros. That might be Tropium, Charizard is pretty bad, even though its moves are really good. Also keep in mind that fire does not yet resist ice. The super effective text is actually bugged. Just like on cartridge, it only shows type effectiveness versus your secondary type. So even though the super effective displays are wrong, the calculation is correct. You are weak to ice. It's not like any of you playing this can understand what the super effective prompt is anyway. <laughs> I guess that's just extra trivia. I can't believe they changed the name of Twitter to Comex. So stupid. <laughs> it's Comex. Again, really, really good moves. Hydro Pump, Body Slam, Blizzard, and Earthquake. I actually don't know if I could think of a better moveset. Stock values dropping precipitously after changing the name to Comex. I, I just don't know why you would actually pick Blastoise. It's so outclassed by other waters. Its stats just aren't good enough. And there's no real chance of cheese, aside from a 10% Blizzard Freeze, but other Pokemon can do that too, and do it better. At least the Hydro Pump animation is really cool, right? Next, 
It's Spear! If you watched my Fire Emblem videos, you're probably sick of me saying that swords are the worst weapon type by now. Well, good news, because in Pokemon Stadium Zero, uh, spears are the worst weapons. It's Beedrill. Hey, what do you want me to say about this thing? Its moves are Twin Needle, although in Japanese it's Double Needle. Why did localization ruin it? It has the ninja <laughs> technique of Double Team. It has Sword Stance and it has Hyper Beam. I was considering saying that every Pokemon with the ninja <laughs> technique of Double Team can sneak into Nishino Kuni. Not for spears, okay? Your opponent doesn't need axes to beat you. Oh my god. Consolation for spear? It's not the worst Pokemon in the game, but it's definitely a contender. And hey, the game is Butterfree free, so... Developers just really liked spear. Hey you! Like and subscribe! This is not a drill! Actually, it is a drill. It's Oni Drill! <laughs> Sphero, you can see all of its moves are blue. <laughs> that means they're all flying type. It has God Bird, which is sky attack. Uh, it has mirror move, it has drill peck, and it has fly. The only move you would ever consider using here is drill peck. Uh, you can never use mirror move because you will always die to the first move that hits you. You can probably guess where this is going. <laughs> I thought flying movement was good! How can it be in the bottom tier? Firo and Metamon, this is not a drill. I guess there's few enough Pokemon that we can actually rank within the tiers, so I would definitely rather use Firo than Beedrill. Oh. Beloved fan favorite, Pikachu! It's got 100,000 volts! That's Thunderbolt. It has Mega Punch, it has Seismic Taws, and it has Flash. It's a Pikachu. Light Ball doesn't even exist yet. I don't think Pikachu is the worst Pokemon in the game. But it's definitely worse than Beedrill. And although it's wearing a hat, no cap. Abolish the monarchy! Anyway, here's Nido Queen. It's got Earthquake, it's got Toxic, it's got Blizzard. And it's got Body Slam. It's also got an animation that I guess we got the censored version of. Just loops. I didn't say the Japanese name, it's Nido Queen. Really good moves and one really good type. Ground type. Almost every enemy has at least one super fast electric and a ground type with viable moves just auto wins against them. Combined with the ability to potentially stop ninjas with toxic. I think Nido Queen might actually be our first viable Pokemon. Barely viable. Yes, Queen. Is that what the kids say? Or is that people older than me? Nido King, better than Nido Queen in pretty much every format, certainly including this one, right? Nido King's moves are Earthquake, it also has Toxic, it has Surf, and it has Thrash. Surf and Thrash are really disappointing. Even though Nidoking overall just has better stats than Nidoqueen, I think that Nidoqueen's access to Blizzard, which is crazy, and Body Slam for the potential paralysis is actually worth more. Significantly more. The nicest thing I can say about Nidoking is that old Jolteon's no match for the king! For the first time in history, the king actually dethroned by the queen. Is this Macbeth? It's still an okay ground type, but I think it is significantly worse than Nido Queen. You're never gonna see this again. No king rules forever. Dig, dar, dig, dig, dar, dig. Trio, trio, trio. It's still called Doug Trio, but Diglett is Digdar. <laughs> Doug Trio. It's got Dig, it's got Sand Attack, it's got Slash, and it's got Earthquake. Doug Trio is almost always the fastest Pokemon on the field. Electrode and Jolteon are both faster, but obviously they both lose to Doug Trio, so that doesn't really matter. 
It's speed ties with Alakazam, but the enemy Pokemon are actually higher level than you, so you will get beaten by Alakazam, but everything else, you'll outspeed. Aerodactyl exists, but no enemies use them, so don't worry about that. Guaranteed crit slash, super high crit earthquake, and the option to accuracy cheese them with pocket sand. Ground type means that you auto win against enemy electrics, and being able to almost always move first means that you will almost always do something. I think that Doug Trio is going to be our first Pokemon in literally OU, which is kind of ironic because in RBY it's not literally OU, <laughs> but in this game it is. Always does something, and that something is almost always useful. It dug its way to the top. It's Okorizaru! Fastest fighting type in the game. It has Mega Punch. It has Focus Energy. It has Jigoku Guruma. Hell Wheel! It's submission. And it has Dig. Actually, pretty good moves. Fighting types suck. It's better than Beedrill. If Tauros somehow doesn't insta-kill you, you can then fail to kill it with a submission. Incredible. If this was faster than Tauros, you might actually find something that it could do, but no. It's, I believe, 15 points slower, so no shot <laughs> of being able to do anything. A breeze is blowing. It's windy! It has Fire Blast? It has Double Edge, it has Dig, and it has Hyper Beam. Actually, very good moves, and Windy has overall very, very good stats. I know I'm Arab, but don't call me Ganondorf, okay? I did not covet this wind. Fire types suck. Everyone has water types. I don't think there's a single Pokemon you could actually 1v1 on any of the competitive teams. Bad dog. You want to see a magic trick? It's Hoodin! Hoodin here has Seismic Toss, Recover, Psychic, and Dig. Uh, you can see these values here. Speed 160, Special 175. Literally owe you. Do I need to explain more? I don't think you need 5,000 IQ like Alakazam to understand why Alakazam is a good choice. It's probably better than Doug Trio. <laughs> Even though Kaideki's huge. Kaideki's inside me? It's Kaideki. And its first move is actually Kaideki. <laughs> strength uh, in Japanese is Kaideki. It just means like superpower. So its moves are strength, it's got focus energy, it's got seismic toss, and it's got submission. Aww. It also has 95 speed. Kaideki? More like Machump. Doesn't actually work unless you say Machamp, right? It's, it's probably better than Primeape. Primeape probably goes second and then doesn't really do any damage. Machamp definitely goes second and does a bit more damage, I guess. My favorite Zelda race, the Goronyas. Goro Goro means to roll, by the way. So I assume that's why both Golem's Japanese name, Goronya, and the Zelda race Gorons have Goro in it. Moves are Rock Throw, Body Slam, Earthquake, and Big Boom, Daibaku Hatsu, Explosion. Rock Throw in Gen 1 is horrendous. It is so bad. It has terrible base power and accuracy. Never, ever, ever use Rock Throw, or else you'll Rock Throw the game, okay? Anyway, you caught a Goronya, right? Super good. Super good. If the enemy cannot one-hit KO you, you can definitely one-hit KO them by just going boom. If they have an electric type, you auto-win. And against Tauros, every Tauros will Blizzard you, but Blizzard is not a one-hit KO, so you can just blow up on them. You barely even feel the loss of a viable rock move. The only thing you would use Rock Slide against would be, like, Articuno, but Articuno kills you anyway, so anything you would rock throw beats you anyway. I thought they built the golem out of clay. Apparently it's a clay more. Fire in the hole! Bombs? You want it? 
It's yours, my friend. Even though this game is missing a ton of rentals, they somehow managed to find a rare coil. It's rare coil. Rare coil here has Thunderbolt. It has Thunder Wave. It has Speed Star, which is swift. And it has Screech. Talk shoe 160, bro. Magnets, how do they work? I'm not really sure, but they're definitely viable. Tons of enemy waters. I think this guy can 1v1 pretty much any water type. Remember that special is one stat, so your incredible special offense is also really good special defense. And you can Thunder Wave Tauros, and I don't think Tauros can one-shot you with Earthquake. Very, very good choice. It's just outclassed by another electric type we'll talk about later. And ninjas hate him. I thought ninjas were the one that had shurikens, and yet... Rare Coil is the one throwing stars like it's Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Which is apparently only in 30 FPS. I don't really know why that's a big deal, but people are really mad about it, so I should probably be mad about it too. <laughs> Speaking of ninjas, you've heard of Shen. What about Parshen? It's, it's Parshen. Parshen's moves are Clamp, Supersonic, Ice Beam, and Spike Cannon. Supersonic and Spike Cannon are completely useless, and Ice Beam is just really bad Blizzard in Gen 1. The extra power of Blizzard is way better considering that it actually has 90 accuracy. But you, if you pinch him with the shell, which is the literal translation for Japanese name of clamp, trapping is super, super overpowered. And I think this is actually your only trapper in the rental sets. And Cloyster does have Bogyo 220, which is crazy. What's Tauros going to do to you? I mean, it's probably still going to kill you, but it's going to have a hard time doing that. I don't know if I would call it viable, maybe if it had Blizzard, but it can probably do something, and Clamp is very, very cheesy. <laughs> you know what they say, where there's Thoros, they clamp back. Makes about as much sense as the actual YouTube poop line. <laughs> when there's Tauros in the neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Ghost types! I, th I think that's right. It's Gengar. Moves are Confuse Ray, Night Head, which is Nightshade, Hypnosis, and Dream Eater. Really good stats. Ghost is a really good type, and it does have a sleeping move. It's actually the fastest sleep move in the game. Gengar could have been so good. Could have been so good. The moveset is really disappointing. It technically speed ties Tauros, but your enemies have better stats than you, so Tauros will always outspeed you, always kill you with Earthquake. If that wasn't the case, I'd probably actually put this in Viable. But being able to outspeed and sleep most opponents, and just being a ghost type, both of those are very viable. Probably viable enough to float into Nishinokuni. I mean, it has Levitate, right? We have a proud tradition of shouting Onyx, but of course that's not the Japanese name. It's Yuok, which you probably already knew because in the anime he still has his Japanese voice. <laughs> he's not just roaring; he's saying Yuok. Yuok's moves here: Earthquake, the ninja <laughs> technique of double team, double edge, and explosion. R U ready. I'm not kidding. I think Ewok is better than Nido King in this game. I think this is the highest Onyx has ever placed. It's a ground type, so you auto win against Electrics, and Electrode can't even explode against you because you're also a rock type. And you have Explosion! So even though you have a piddling 45 attack, Gen 1 Explosion is crazy. You can actually hurt things. You're never gonna see any walk this viable again. Are we sure that we got the improved version in the West? For some reason, not many people like Hypno, they think he's kind of creepy, but I think I would definitely say it's a Suripa pick. This Japanese name is Sleeper. It's got Hypnosis, it's got Dream Eater, it's got Psychic, and it's got Yoga Pose, which is Meditate. This is probably the only moveset out of any of the rentals that's just a real head-scratcher. 
Why does this have meditate with no physical moves? Why? <laughs> Before the special split absolutely murdered Sleeper and made it a useless res tank, it actually did have Tokshu 155. It had 115 base special in Gen 1, and it is a psychic type. You can sleep things? You can potentially heal with Dream Eater, although the opponent really likes to switch out their sleeping Pokemon, so Dream Eater is basically useless. That's fine though, because you do have psychic. However, one of the things that makes Psychic so overpowered in Gen 1 is that there's a zillion poison types, right? But your opponents recognize that poison types suck and that Psychic types are good. So your opponents have Psychic types that you can't Psychic. And they don't have poison types that you can Psychic. <laughs> Even though it has a sleep move, it's like kinda slow, gets completely owned by Tauros. Might actually be Metamon. I, I just, I don't think Hypno is that good. I love Sleeper. People are sleeping on Sleeper. Whoa. Oh yeah, I guess I could see Sleeper at the bottom of Niche. It does have a sleep move. Even though this is a rental Pokemon, you can't use it. This one's Maru Mine. I kind of mean that because the actual winner of the real tournament had an electrode named Omaru. And my name's Omar. I was on the winning team, guys. Maru Mine here has Sonic Boom, it has Thunderbolt, it has Swift, and it has Explosion. The special attack is kind of underwhelming, but this is the fastest Pokemon in the game. So you have Rutger status, 30% crit Thunderbolt, which is a lot more useful than you might think. You can counter the ninja <laughs> strategy of double team using Swift, and as a last resort, you have the fastest explosion in the East. It's April, so it is well past Valentine's Day, but I have to ask, will you be Maru Mine? Really, really useful. It's probably better than Doug Trio. I really wish this had Thunder Wave. If this had Thunder Wave, it would be even better. There's an extremely, extremely annoying Japanese mascot called Funashi. I hate it, but I love Nashi. You don't want to play this game, Nashi Nashi. It's a Japanese joke, it would mean without executor. Best Pokemon in the game. Best Pokemon in the game, I'm telling you right now. I should probably also say what the moves are and then, then you'll believe me. Psychic, Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, and Explosion. Literally every battle we did started by sending out Executor. It has no unlosable matches. Its worst matchup is probably Articuno. And even then Articuno doesn't one hit KO it because your special is your special defense and you have Tokshu 165. You pretty much cannot get one hit KO'd, which means you can always at the very least sleep something, which is almost as good as killing them. And then even if you have almost no health, you can 1v1, <laughs> might be more accurate to say, 1 for 1, anything, by just blowing up with explosion. And your backup plan is one of the strongest psychics in the game. I never used Bleach Seed. <laughs> Pokemon Stadium Zero was wild, bro. Ewok <laughs> is nowhere near the worst, and a grass type is the uncontested <laughs> best Pokemon in the game. Play Pokemon Stadium Zero today. This Pokemon is nuts. Coconuts. <laughs> Let me ask you. You feeling lucky, kid? It's lucky. It's got Egg Bomb, the ninja <laughs> technique of Minimize, Sing, and Soft Boiled. Almost every enemy has Chansey, so we know that Chansey is extremely viable. The rental Chansey is one move away from being literally OU. Why did they give it Egg Bomb? If it had a real move instead of Egg Bomb, it would be great. It even has Soft Boiled. But no, it has Egg Bomb. Maybe you can hit a 55% accuracy sing. Maybe. Even if you do, it's not your lucky day. 
Kanga, 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 Ska. Apparently it's Garuda. I thought Garuda was a flying type. Garuda here has Mega Kick, Earthquake, Surf, and Pew Pew Punch, which is Dizzy Punch. Why would you ever use this? You wouldn't. I think the best thing I can say is that it probably doesn't die in one hit. I don't even think I could describe this as great value Tauros. This is like dollar store Tauros. It's really bad. Its special is also horrendous, so it auto dies to special attacks. Really bad. Not really related to Kangaskhan, but I had a kid in Japan once ask me, Oh, Guda sensei, can you eat Genghis Khan? I was really confused, but apparently Genghis Khan is just what they call a special type of grilled lamb. Anyway, I'd rather eat Genghis Khan than use Kangaskhan. It's probably better than Beedrill. How many stars do we rate? Starmie, one of the kings of OU. It has Recover, it has the ninja <laughs> technique of Minimize, it has Thunderbolt, and it has Hydro Pump. That's almost good. I really, really wish it had Blizzard. <laughs> if it had Blizzard, I think it would be literally OU. But it has reasonable moves, it's very fast, and it does have the ninja <laughs> technique of Minimize. We can definitely say it's viable. I think literally OU would be a bit of a stretch. I said that intentionally because here I can put footage of the incredibly stretchy Starmie animation. <laughs> it's really funny. We rate Starmie four stars. I'm just reusing the Fire Emblem animation, okay? I'm not making a new one for one rating. There's a soccer joke in the Rental Nightmares video. It took me like 40 minutes to edit. Well, here's a baseball joke. Strike! It's strike. <laughs> I guess this could also just be another soccer joke, right? Super Mario Strikers? Just everyone is Scyther. <laughs> it has the ninja <laughs> technique of double team, it has slash, it has sword stance, and it has hyper beam. You'll notice that these are all normal moves. <laughs> Well, of course it doesn't get stab because it slashes. I actually don't know what other moves I would run on Gen 1 Strike. You can slash for an auto crit and immediate power, or you can sword stance and then hyper beam. And you're really fast and you have good attack. And you have the ninja <laughs> technique of double team. Scyther's kind of legit. It's kind of legit. Issue is that pretty much every enemy <laughs> has either Thunderbolt or Blizzard, both of which kill you. That's Strike 1. Double Team can be good cheese, but it's not really a strategy, right? If they hit you, you die, and they are favored to hit you. That's Strike 2. And you're just barely too slow. If you had like 10 more speed and you could outspeed a higher level Tauros and try and cut him up, then that would be a real use for this Pokemon, but... I think that's Storike 3. You're out of Viable. I think you're still probably better than Charizard, I guess. But hey, if we're using the Japanese names, at least I don't have to scream Scyther, so that's nice. Storike! I have no idea what its Japanese name sounds like. <laughs> People keep calling rogues rouges. What about Rujira? Moves are Body Slam, Ice Punch, Blizzard, and Thrash. It basically only has one move, but it's one of the best moves in the game. Fastest Stab Blizzard available on rentals? Really wish it had Psychic instead of Ice Punch? Ice Punch is totally useless. You should always, always just use Blizzard. However, when fighting Tauros, it gets outsped and it has really, really bad defense. So auto dieting to Tauros is really bad. And you can't even hope to paralyze them with body slam on a switch in because of the way that secondary status works in gen one. Because body slam is a normal move and Tauros is a normal type, you cannot paralyze it with body slam. It only works that way in gen one. <laughs> really wish this thing had lovely kiss. That would be very useful. Auto lose to Tauros is so bad, but at least you have a decently fast, really strong blizzard. 
Here-ish? Jinx, you owe me a good move set. We had spear earlier. Now we have axes. It's Kairos. Ross is a pretty terrible unit, but he's better than this thing. Oh, Kairos has guillotine. It has hyper beam. It has swords dance and it has seismic toss. You cannot guillotine enemies that are faster than you. And most enemies are going to be faster than you. So you can't even gamble on that. You do have a good attack stat. You can swords dance and hyper beam. I'm not gonna say that's viable. I don't even think it's passable. It's not like laughably bad or anything. It's just not very good. <laughs> Invest into Ross, you eventually get a pretty decent unit. Invest into Kai Ross, what do you get? A member of the Metamon tier, ugh. At least it doesn't auto die to Psychic. We just said that Ross was a bad unit, but what about Kenta Ross? Kenta's the main character of Yokai Watch. Yokai Watch when? It's Kentaros. Kentaros's viability depends on its move set. So what moves do we have? We have Takedown. That's not good. We have Tail Whip. That's not good. We have Hyper Beam. That is good. And we have Thunder. That's not good. Well, that's unfortunate. Even if Tail Whip lowered their defense three stages, which it should because we have three tails, I still wouldn't use it. I really wish that Thunder was Blizzard. There's literally a tutorial in Pokemon Stadium 2 that teaches you about the super effective Swindle by telling you not to use Thunder with Tauros. <laughs> Although to be fair, in that tutorial, that was after they nerfed Tauros' special. Even though Tauros is the most literally OU Pokemon of Gen 1, our rental is not exactly A5 Wagyu, okay? Really wish it had Blizzard, really wish it had Body Slam, but it does have Hyper Beam. I think just because it has Hyper Beam and 110 base speed, it's, it's definitely viable. <laughs> Grab Kentaros by the horns and probably kill one opponent, maybe? I guess you could say, I've got beef with their moveset. Gara, Gara, he's our dose. It's Gyarados. Gyarados' moves are Bite, Dragon Rage, Dragon Rage, Surf, and Ice Beam. Gyarados actually had a 100 base special in Gen 1, so having special moves isn't really that bad of an idea. Having Bite and Dragon Rage and Ice Beam probably is a bad idea. <laughs> I don't really know what you would use this for. Bite is useless. Dragon Rage is useless. I guess Surf is okay, and I, I really wish it had Blizzard. It's like Comex, except you definitely die to Thunderbolt, whereas Comex maybe doesn't. Imagine Blastoise actually being better than Gyarados. Only in Stadium Zero. Take your screenshots now. Onyx versus Pronix. For the first and only time ever, Onyx actually wins. <laughs> I thought Lapis was a cute girl with pink clothes. Why is there a, a blue dino here? It's Lapras. Moves are Body Slam, Sauce Light. It's confused, right? Ice Beam and Hydro Pump. That's pretty good. I wish it had Blizzard! What's its Japanese name? Lapras. Look at this shuffle icon. Look how smug it is! I guess it's kind of deserved. Pretty good at 1v1-ing. You can get a body slam paralysis. You deal decent damage. You can do some Confuse Ray cheese if you're lucky. Really wish it had Blizzard, but Ice Beam still does have the 10% chance to super one-hit KO with Gen 1 Freeze. And the fact that Lapras itself is an ice type means that it can't be frozen, which is nice. And it's not really that bad because there are no fighting types. You don't have to worry about that. And steel doesn't even exist. So ice in Gen 1 was actually pretty good. Unlike nowadays, and by nowadays, I mean from Gen 2 onwards. Times change. Facebook is dead. Invest in Metamon. Metamon is about as viable as Meta. Well, we know what Metamon does. It has Transform. 
the most you will ever be is a horrendous version of your opponent that had to pay a one turn tax to transform. Your HP doesn't scale and you have horrible HP, so you're always gonna be squishier than your opponent. That's best case scenario. Realistically, before you can copy your opponent's better stats, you just died before you transformed. I think it's worse than Pikachu. I think it's actually the worst Pokemon in the game. So it is meta-defining in, in the sense that it is the exact inverse of the meta. Best thing I can say about Metamon, it made for a pretty fun ROM hack. Thanks, Skawo. And be sure to watch that video, I think it's actually pretty interesting. If you made it this far in the video, then you're definitely a gamer, which means that you're not very familiar. With Shawazu, Showers has Bite, it has Melt, which is the Japanese name of Acid Armor, it has Bubble Beam, and it has Mist. I'm trying to be very optimistic here. Maybe you can drop Tauros's speed with Bubble Beam. It'll still outspeed you, but maybe your other Pokemon will move first. We are gamers. We don't take showers to the tournament. Really bad. Like, really bad. Uh, I think it's better than Beedrill because it probably will survive one hit, whereas these Pokemon tend to just insta-die. So you can bubble beam them once. Make it count. Are we in a stadium? Or is it the Thunderdome? It's Thunders! Moves are Thunder Wave, Double Kick, Quick Attack, and Thunderbolt. One of the fastest Pokemon in the game, only outsped by Electrode. Super, super fast Thunder Wave, and gets the drop on the zillion water types, and you can zap them. Also very good against Articuno, who's also very dangerous. Double Kick sucks. <laughs> so does Quick Attack. But being able to paralyze threats, including Tauros, and zap all the water types is really, really valuable. Really valuable. I, I think you should probably, no exaggeration, bring this to every single fight. It auto loses to ground types, which is an issue obviously, but it's so useful against everything else that I would describe it as literally OU. A good day to have a Jolteon profile pick. Probably not a good day to have a Vaporeon one. The unfortunate truth that we all already know, it's never a good day to have a booster profile pick. Uh oh. It's got Fire Blast, it's got Leer, it's got Sand Attack, and it's got Quick Attack. Hey, this was before they nerfed it special. <laughs> oh. We have a housing crisis, because I can't actually fit booster in Metamon tier, so we have to build more housing. Now we can go ahead and use the boost to put Booster... It's probably better than Vaporeon. And uh, Metamon gets uh, demoted to Metamon real. It's actually Metamon. It's actually him. Don't feel too bad for Booster though. He's not very good in the Pokemon games, which is why he started his own business as the internet's most reputable power leveling service. Foster's doing just fine guys, don't worry. You also have space to move Dragonite up. <laughs> Quiz, who has the best speed stat in Fire Emblem Three Houses? Answer, it's Petra. Also one of the fastest Pokemon in this game. Petra has Sky Attack, it has Super Sonic, it has Double Edge, and it has Hyper Beam. You might be wondering why it doesn't have any rock moves, and that's not because they didn't choose the right moves, it's because it doesn't get any in Gen 1. Ah! Really, really fast Hyper Beam and a really, really high crit rate. And remember, if you crit and kill your opponent with Hyper Beam, you don't have to recharge. Subayasa 170! You have to watch out for Jolteon and Electrode, both of which beat you. But those Pokemon are so hard countered by your ground types that I think you can actually make room for Petra. I don't think it's literally OU, but I, I think it's actually viable. Being able to get the drop on and have a 30% chance to go Rutger mode and crit their face off with Hyper Beam, that's really good. This might actually be... Great Value Tauros. How did this thing go extinct? I probably got hit by either Thunderbolt or Blizzard, which is everywhere in this game. Oh!
I did this joke already in Stadium 2, and it doesn't actually make sense in Japanese, because the Japanese name of Snorlax has nothing to do with sleeping. It's Kabigon! This guy can eat mold! It's got rest, it's got body slam, it has blizzard, and it has thunderbolt. Kabigon is not yet the best Pokemon ever, that's <laughs> Gen 2. But in Gen 1, it's kinda okay. It does have body slam, which is super important. Even though it's special sucks, which means it takes a ton of special damage and doesn't deal much out, Blizzard is still pretty busted. <laughs> Despite being one of the only Pokemon actually hurt by speed factoring into crit calculations in Gen 1, just because Kabigon is actually so slow, it actually loses crit compared to the current crit calculation. It's so bulky that it has a very good chance to at least 1v1 an opponent, especially if you get the body slam paralysis, which isn't an outrageous amount of luck at all. I don't know if it's literally OU. But it's definitely viable. Although Snorlax did get a huge buff going into Gen 2, it actually got an even bigger nerf going from Stadium 0 to Stadium 1 because they removed the jiggle. Western censorship is out of control! Anybody remember the Freezer Saga? It's Freezer! It's got Takedown, it's got Toxic, it's got Blizzard, and it's got Fly. Fly is actually not that much of a meme because hey, you can Toxic stall with it. And I believe this is the strongest Blizzard you have access to. Tokshu 165, wow! Even though this game is in Japanese, I think I would describe this thing as... Arctic Uno. It's really good! Notably, it's very good against enemy executor, which none of the other literally OU Pokemon can deal with. I'm sure Arctic Uno will be just as viable for the remainder of Pokemon's history. They say that lightning doesn't strike twice. Apparently thunder does though. So Jolteon is thunders? And Zapdos is Thunder. Thunder here has Thunderbolt. It has Thunder Wave. It has Drill Peck and it has Fly. I have no idea why they gave it both Fly and Drill Peck. I think I would just say that Fly is useless. But really strong Thunderbolt to deal with all of the water types. And Thunder Wave is very, very good against Tauros. I wouldn't say it's Articuno, maybe I'd rank it Zapdos. I probably would rather use this than Magneton. Comparably powerful Thunderbolt, except you can't Earthquake Zapdos. You can Blizzard him though. But Magneton has really good defense, so it probably doesn't die to Earthquake. And Zapdos has really good special, so it probably doesn't die to Blizzard, so either way, you're almost dead, but you're not quite dead, which is very important. And I'm sure that Zapdos will be just as viable for the rest of Pokemon's history. I guess it's actually not a joke this time. Is this a Pokemon? Or my mixtape? It's Fire. <laughs> Fire has Sky Attack, it has the ninja <laughs> technique of Double Team, it has Fire Blast, and it has Fly. It's overall just way better Charizard. It has almost 40 more special compared to Charizard, but it's a little bit slower. Fire's Fire Blast is much stronger, but its other attacks are much worse compared to Charizard. For both of them, their defining trait is being able to use the ninja <laughs> technique of Double Team. Fire is definitely better than Charizard, but not by much, and I don't think I would recommend using either. Not a great showing by Faya in Gen 1. And I think all of the legendary birds peaked in Gen 1, so it's just downhill from here. The final Pokemon, Kaidu. Kaidu's inside me? But Kaidiki's al already inside me. There's not much room. Kaidu. It's got Body Slam, it's got Thunder, it's got Surf. And it has Dragon Rage, Dragon Rage. Great stats. That's probably the last positive thing I can say. I think this thing might actually be Metamontier. Like, it has really good stats, 
but you instantly die to Blizzard. Everything has Blizzard. You can probably beat maybe enemy electrics, but ground types do that so much better. And the moves are pretty disappointing. I think this is actually top of Metamon. I can't actually think of a use for this thing. That does push Pikachu off the list. But we can just put it here and just pretend that it's also a ditto that just transformed into a Pikachu. They definitely belong together. I can say one more nice thing about Kaidu. At least it's not Kaiyu. Oh! So many iconic American shows actually came from Canada. They should have kept Kaiyu, okay? We don't want him. Having revealed my true allegiance as an American, thank you for watching this ostensibly Japanese video. Here's a bonus tip from me to you. And when I say me, I mean all the viewers. Even if you pick the best Pokemon in the game, you are gonna lose horribly, repeatedly. There's no continues. Did I not mention that by the way? So you're probably gonna need to utilize some Nintendo PC features. Even if you're the greatest trainer in Kanto, which, which I am by the way, so even if you are the second greatest trainer in Kanto, you're gonna need one more thing to win. I'll just let the announcer say it. You're gonna have to listen pretty closely, it's English. Thank you for watching the Pokemon Stadium Zero Rental Guide. Pokemon Stadium is sponsored by the mighty Patreons you see on screen now. Please consider evolving into a Patreon using the link in the description below. You'll probably be more viable than Flareon and Vaporeon, since Vaporeon also apparently sucks in this game.